Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, once again, a very good morning, dear co colleagues, um, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. We are now having the 8,537th meeting of the Security Council. It's called to order. The professional agenda for this meeting is the situation in Somalia. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with rules 37 of the Council Professional Rules of Procedure, I would like to invite the representative of Somalia to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. <clears throat> Members of the Council have before them document S slash 2019 slash 444, the text of a draft resolution submitted by the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The Council is ready to proceed to the vote on the draft resolution before it. I shall put the draft resolution to the vote now. Will those in favor of the draft resolution as contained in document S slash 2019 slash 444, please raise their hand. Thank you. The result of the voting is as follows. The draft resolution received 15 votes in favor the draft resolution has been adopted unanimously as Resolution 2472 of 2019. Um, I now would like to give the floor to those members of the Council who, who wish to make statement after the vote. I give the floor to the distinguished permanent representative of South Africa. We have the floor, Ambassador. Mr. President, we thank the United Kingdom in its capacity as the pen holder for their transparency, tireless efforts, and commitment in facilitating the resolution that you have just adopted. The renewal of AMISON mandate is a significant undertaking by this council in supporting the federal government of Somalia and the people of Somalia and the people of Somalia. We recognize the fundamental importance of the role of AMISON for its efforts towards the restoration of security and stability in Somalia, which will have otherwise been impossible to reach without the presence of this EU-led mission. Amazon's role is also invaluable as Somalia prepares for 2020-2021 elections. South Africa align itself with the AU Commission and AU PSC principled, principled call on the AU UN and key partners in Somalia to provide the required resources to support Amazon in a sustained and predictable manner. This is important as Amazon tasks and responsibilities requires it to align its logistical and equipment capabilities and capacities with the realities and changing on the ground, changes on the ground. Mr. President, the stability and enhancement security in Somalia will improve the security of the shipping lanes in the Horn of Africa, thus ensuring free trade flows around the world to benefit all of us. We should thus appreciate the contribution of AUTCCs in this regard. 
Hence, the necessity for this council to agree on funding such a vital peacekeeping operation, which benefit all of us around the world. Mr. President, we remain concerned with the precarious humanitarian situation that still prevails in Somalia. We call all the international community to redouble its efforts towards improving the humanitarian situation and, uh, pro and to protect all those in vulnerable situations. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of South Africa. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished permanent representative of Côte d'Ivoire. You have the floor, Ambassador. Merci, Johnny. Merci. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Mr. President. As you are coming to the end of your presidency of our council, my delegation would like to commend you and thank you for the laudable efforts that you have made to ensure that our work unfolds in the best possible circumstances. You have done an enormous amount of work and we are very grateful for that. My delegation welcomes the adoption of Resolution 2472, which extends for one additional year the mandate of the African Union mission in Somalia, AMISOM. In particular, we welcome the fact that this resolution was adopted by unanimity by the members of our Council, and we thank the United Kingdom, the penholder, and the facilitator in the negotiations. We also thank the other delegations for their active contributions and their sense of compromise, without which this vital consensus, which we welcome, would not have been possible. For Côte d'Ivoire, the presence of AMISOM in, in Somalia is essential in the current transition process, given the security situation in the country. My country, therefore, welcomes the recognition in this resolution of the importance of its contribution and its essential role in creating security conditions that are conducive for building the Somalian state. Our Council, therefore, has the duty to encourage it and to help it to fully carry out its mission in order to preserve what has been achieved, which remains fragile, but which is nevertheless encouraging. That is why we are particularly pleased to note that the resolution takes into account some of the concerns that we expressed when it comes to the need to properly take into account the realities on the ground with the human and uh, other resources needed for the effective operation of AMISOM. Um, Cote d'Ivoire now calls upon members of the Council and all Somalian parties to work for the full implementation of this resolution with a view towards the restoration of peace and lasting stability in Somalia. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, uh, Leon. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished permanent representative of Equatorial Guinea. Ambassador, <coughs> you have the floor. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. As May comes to an end today, I would like once again to reiterate our congratulations to Indonesia and all of your delegation for the excellent work done during your hyperactive presidency, which was very rich in the volume of debates and topics dealt with. I also take this opportunity to wish Kuwait a very successful presidency in June and express our full willingness to cooperate as much as possible so as to guarantee its full success. We'd like to express gratitude for the dedication and hard work of the United Kingdom as Penholder who provided who made all provided every means to facilitate the negotiations on this resolution. We thank each one of the other delegations as well for their levels of flexibility so as to reach the consensus we have reached. 
However, we would like to uh, give our impressions on the current situation on the ground. We understand that despite the political will shown by the Somalian government and the many efforts undertaken by the international community, the Somali security forces still require support before they can uh, assume full responsibility for the situation in the country. Therefore, the A3 has introduced into the text a provision which conditions future reductions upon a joint AU-UN assessment of the security context and the threats in the country, which should happen prior to any further action in this direction. The flexibility during the negotiations to introduce this provision has led us to vote in favour of this draft, which now has become Resolution 2472. Given the difficult trajectory of Somalia since the beginning of the 90s, the 1990s, we can presume that the efforts of the international community are, are being very successful in helping it to make progress towards consolidating its state. But despite the political achievements, there is still a long way to go and much to be done regarding the security, which is threatened in particular by the terrorist organization Al-Shabaab and other extremist groups. This is a situation which also affects other countries of the region and prevents uh, the consolidation of peace and socio-political development of Somalia. For our delegation, it remains very important that there be a strong contribution from AMISOM in this delicate process. Therefore, during this new phase, it will be important for the international community and the Somalian government to ensure that the Somali security forces are sufficiently trained and equipped so that they can uh, responsibly and comprehensively ensure the security of their people, uh, given that general elections are also forthcoming and that any premature uh, handover could uh, bring down all the efforts made thus far. Therefore, the Security Council, the United Nations and the international community must uh, resolutely support AMISAM and the Somalian government so that efforts deployed by both have the desired effects, both for Somalia in particular and for the whole of the Horn of Africa region in general as well. Thank you very much. I thank the distinguished ambassador of Equatorial Guinea. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished permanent representative of the United Kingdom. You have the floor, Ambassador. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. I don't intend to make a, a full uh, EOV, uh, but I just wanted to thank colleagues uh, round the table uh, for their constructive approach uh, to this negotiation and to our African uh, partners in particular. I'd also like to thank uh, my expert, Neris, uh, for bringing this to a good conclusion. Um, and I wanted to, Mr. President, to say that this is the first resolution we've tried following the Green Tree Retreat, uh, where we took uh, an existing volume of pages and shortened it and hopefully uh, put it into clearer language. Uh, so certainly from the United Kingdom side, uh, we commit to the Council uh, to do that with all our future resolutions, including where uh, we are renewing uh, mandates, uh, and we invite uh, colleagues to do likewise. Uh, lastly, just to congratulate you, Jani, uh, I missed the reception last night, for which apologies, uh, but thank you uh, for a very important month, and we look forward uh, very much to working and supporting Q8. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Karen. Um, speaking quickly on my personal uh, national capacity, um, to support you on having a, a short resolution. This is what I think are expected by, by colleagues uh, uh, in this room. Uh, once again, a congratulations for this resolution. Um, uh, Jerry, you are asking for the floor again? Okay. Now I'm summing my, my, my uh, function as the president. Uh, Jerry, you have the floor. President, I want to apologize. I really wanted to apologize 
because I forgot to congratulate you on what a marvelous job you did, including filling my wardrobe with extra batik shirts. Jan, you and your team, as Karen and Antonia were saying, did an excellent job. I know we all pressurized you. And you all teared you this way, this way. I'm told this is how the council works anyway. But congratulations for the job well done. In an Asian way with Asian flavor and style. Kuwait is not very far from Asia. I'm sure they've been brushing you to see how Asians manage files. My brother, congratulations from several delegations. I was reminded by the colleagues that you did a terrible mistake. You better apologize now. <laughs> Jenny, congratulations. Thanks very much. I thank you. Coming from you, Jerry, that is a... An excellent point. Um, <laughs> no, thank you very much, Jerry. Once again, as well as colleagues, uh, for the, the, the kind words addressed to the chair as, and as well as the team. Now, I would like to invite the distinguished representative of Somalia. You have the floor. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to begin by thanking you, Mr. President for giving me that, this opportunity to address the Council. As the Indonesian Presidency of the Council comes to an end, allow me to warmly congratulate you on your excellent leadership in presiding over the Council for the month of May and your country's continued contribution to the maintenance of international peace and security. Also, I would like to take this opportunity to wish the brotherly state of Kuwait, all success during their upcoming presidency of the Council for the month of June. My delegation welcomes the Security Council's adoption of Resolution 2472 of 2019, which renews the mandate of AMISOM for a period of 12 months. And I give a special thanks to the penholder UK and the other Council members for their positive contribution in reaching consensus in the just adopted resolution. At the outset, I pay tribute to the deep commitment of the African Union and the troop and police contributing countries of Amazon. Their willingness to stand by Somalia in our darkest days has played a critical role in the progress we are all witnessing today. Their bravery and sacrifice standing side by side with Somali people is a true testament to the strong bond that unites us. We are grateful for their unwavering commitment and par partnership as we move into the next chapter of the transitional plan. We are also pleased that the protection of civilians continues to be at the top of the mandate's priorities. It will allow Amazon to benefit from the necessary means to provide support to our government, which has the primary responsibility to protect persons and property throughout the national territory. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thanks to your efforts, Somalia of today is markedly, markedly different from the Somalia whose aid the United Nations and African Union came to over a decade ago. With regards to our objectives on security and justice, we are in the process of concluding the biometrics registration of every member of SNA. This exercise has taken two years to complete, along with the outcomes of the operational readiness assessment, will form the basis for a professional and efficient military forces. Alongside payroll and institutional reforms, we are harmonizing support, <coughs> resupply, and sustainment for our forces. We are also generating new troops trained to modern standards and equipped to, to enable them to tackle the vicious threat of Al-Shabaab. In recent weeks, with the support of Amazon, 
the Somali National Army began joint operations in Lower Shabelle region, capturing the strategic bridge town of Sabit and Anole from Al Shabaab's control, as well as the agriculturally rich Bariri. The successful joint operations to liberate Lower Shabelle from Al Shabaab demonstrates that Somalia remains fully committed in delivering the implementation of the transitional plan and the revised AMISOM concept of operations 2018-2021. The ongoing operations in Lower Shabelle has widely disrupted Al Shabaab's networks and supply lines. And though early to call, the liberations of those areas had already had a ripple effect on Mogadishu security, especially during the holy month of Ramadan. Not only Al Shabaab are in retreat in Lower Shabelle, the Somali National Army has begun cleansing Al Shabaab along key main supply routes, such as the strategic road from Mogadishu to Johar in Middle Shabelle. To prevent Al Shabaab's resurgence, we need adequate investment in helping the FGS rebuild and extend local governance in the areas liberated from Al-Shabaab. We should not see security efforts as an end, but a crucial means to sustaining long-term peace in Somalia. Long-term peace requires security gains that are consolidated by good governance, investment, and sustainable development. So in parallel, we have endorsed a justice and correction model to implement federal and state police plans and have updated our national stabilization strategy to build local governance and promote reconciliations. These reforms are working towards the objective set out in phase one of the transitional plan and to implement the national security architecture. Furthermore, with the support of the IMF, we have made significant progress toward debt relief under the third staff monitoring program and domestic revenue has increased 27%, and this upward trend continues to be driven by sustained efforts to broaden the tax base. In Somalia, not only have we made great progress on our domestic reforms, but our relations with our neighbors and friends have strengthened. As these reforms take root, there is no doubt that they produce strong backlashes from spoilers. But we are committed to the development and strengthening of our institutions as we gradually assume responsibility for our security. Mr. President, we are cognizant that Amazon cannot stay in Somalia forever, and it's necessary to transition responsibilities from Amazon to the Somali security forces. We are committed to the transitional plan which will enable Amazon's brave men and women to leave a noble legacy of a successful deployment in Somalia. However, Somalia stands at a critical juncture as we are approaching one person, one vote elections in 2020, 2021. We are focused on ensuring a secure, transparent and credible process that is embraced by our people and marks another important step in consolidating democracy and the rule of law in the country. Therefore, any plan drawdown must be done after thoroughly assessing the conditions on the ground. Furthermore, in the adopted resolution today, we stress the importance of implementing the proposed requirement to reduce Amazon's troop ceiling by 1,000 in February 2020 in a more strategic manner. To conclude, and we look forward to continued consultation in that regard. To conclude, I would like to thank the Council for the continuous support and commitment to Somalia. I would like to once again thank the AU, AU UN, and all true contributing countries for their work throughout the mandate that has just ended. We hope that AMISOM's new mandate will be the culmination of efforts to bring sustainable peace and stability to the Federal Republic of Somalia. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Somalia. Now, as there are no more names inscribed uh, on the list of speakers, before joining the meeting, as this is the last scheduled meeting of the Council for the month of May, 
I would like to express my sincere uh, appreciation uh, of the delegation of Indonesia to the members of the Council for not only the kind words, but also the support, and to the Secretariat of the Council for all the support they have given us. Indeed, it has been a very busy month, and one in which we rallied to consensus on several important issues within our purview. We started the first day of our presidency with a consensus a press element on Cyprus, I'm, and I'm glad that we ended uh, today, this morning, on a consensus resolution on Somalia. It clearly shows that the Council, when it wants to be united, it can be united, and I do hope this will be continuous. Uh, we certainly cannot do it alone uh, without the support of uh, all colleagues in this room, the PRs, the DPRs, and I would like to pay a high tribute to the political coordinators because they are the one that makes uh, the smooth sailing for all of us here that are sitting in this, this uh, USAPE uh, table. I also would like to express our sincere appreciation to the Secretariat Has Hasmik and his, uh, her team, the conference service officer over there, the interpreters up high on the mountain over there, as well as the verbatim uh, officers, the security uh, officers, um, uh, the uh, secretary to the presidents, uh, the one that has never been seen but has always been productive, the UN media and journalists, and of course others. And I uh, would like to also sincerely pay thanks to the my own Indonesian mission staff for their hard work, and I think they are much, uh, very happy to see us without our presidencies. Uh, although today marks the end of our, our, our term as president of this month, rest assured that we will continue to contribute the, on the next 580 days of our terms. I'm counting days by days. This shows, shows how very diligent I am. Uh, in conclusion, I must say I am now the happiest person in this room. <laughs> because I will hand over this wooden hammer to my brother Mansur, the PR of Kuwait, which I am confident will do an excellent job as president, as, as the, so, uh, the saying goes, with the strength and wisdom of Thor from, from the Marvel comics, I hand this wooden ha hammer to you with the wisdom and strength to continue the presidency. And with this, Shukran Saidi Rais, the meeting is adjourned. Thank <laughs> you.